Hey everyone, Sahil from Gumroad here. We're launching a new feature today, native Facebook pixel tracking, where you take the ID from Facebook for the pixel that you create, put it into your advanced settings on Gumroad, and you're all set, at least on the Gumroad side. There's a lot more to do on the Facebook end, creating ads and campaigns and lookalike audiences. And honestly, I am not good at that kind of stuff. And Jimmy has sort of chimed in a lot on our Facebook group and so I thought it'd be great for him to walk through how he uses Facebook ads with his Gumroad products already using our third party analytics tool and all these custom code snippets that, you know, he's basically able to get rid of now that we have this new feature so that, you know, creators can take advantage of this new feature. So I'm going to stop talking and let Jimmy take over. Well, I mean, like you guys implemented this pixel really, really well. And so there's really not that much I feel that even needs to be explained from my end. Um, but if you're just getting started with Facebook ads, the very first thing you want to do is set up the pixel. And so that's what this screen is sort of like trying to explain or showing. Um, to make a new pixel, you can just click this button, add new data source. For those new to like the Facebook um, ads manager to get to this page, basically from the starting page, this is what you're going to see when you first start out. Um, in this menu here, ads manager, there's a bunch of shortcuts. The tools that people will be using the most. Um, for me, I found these to be the events manager uh, and audiences. Um, audiences are important because you need to target who gets to see your ads so that they, um, so it's efficient. And then the events manager here is how you set up your pixels. So when you hit events manager, what you're gonna see is like this, this screen or more realistically this screen where all your data sources are. Um, so to set up a new pixel, you just hit add new data source and say Facebook pixel. And it's pretty quick. You can just name it. And basically, when you go to the next screen, uh, the pixel data is like generated instantly. And so you'll have a pixel ID. Copy your pixel ID, go to Gumroad, and go into the advanced setting, uh, advanced tab of your settings, and then just Control V, your Facebook pixel here. And then it'll just automatically basically record every interaction that a new um, you can see before uh, this new pixel was implemented, all you could do was record um, purchases and page views. So that's why there's almost no activity here. There's not that much data. But as of a couple of days ago, I mean, uh, Gumroad's implemented this new feature that allows you to record things like who views your stuff, who initiates a checkout, um, and then who makes a purchase. And the purchase is the most important thing um, because that's, the optimization event that you want to carry over into your ads and into your spending and also the optimization event that you want to use to create your audiences so from here you can see the data that the pixel is bringing in so in this particular hour 120 people viewed things 18 people initiated checkouts and then 16 purchased something um, so yeah i mean basically that's it for the pixel itself is there anything else that i didn't cover that Maybe people would want to know about. So this is basically kind of like a Google Analytics esque view, right? Where you're just like you're getting an overview. You're not currently sort of like doing any retargeting or anything like that. No. Yeah. No. No. Not at all. So this is just like the raw data that comes in, and mm -hmm. then it's up to you to sort of basically take this data and make it meaningful uh, towards your business. And so if we look into the audiences menu, so again you can just get there from the shortcuts menu and then audiences. What you can do here is that you can start segmenting your audience. So if you have multiple products, this is really important to do. Um, I've segmented out people who uh, view my content, view my paid content, people who view my free content, people who purchase paid uh, products and the people who purchase the, the free ones. And I think this is a good way of setting up, um, I think inclusion and exclusion criteria for when you actually start running your ads. Um, and what you want to do if you're just starting out on Gum Road and you have a couple of products and you're generating and accumulating all this data is that you should start segmenting out your audience um, pretty much immediately. And then from there, uh, you can also create lookalike audiences. And this is where Facebook is like the most powerful because um, at least with Google and I believe with other um, advertising platforms, there are lookalike and similar features that they roll out aren't as um, 
they just don't convert as well. Like Facebook has somehow turned this into a, almost like a black <laughs> magic science so that um, yeah. the most important value is purchase uh, again. So that's why I've been able to, at least for like almost months, just use nothing but the, the purchase um, event. Uh, only recently we have all this new data, but honestly, all you really need is the purchase event because with this purchase event, you can create a look like audience. And from here, you want to select your, um, the pixel that you just created and then select purchase. Uh, Facebook is going to basically automatically recommend that you use your purchase event because this is um, the most important event. You can also use other events. Um, just kidding. No, you can't. Uh, just purchase events and then you select your audience location. So we'll just say United States right here and then you can create let's say five lookalike audiences. Um, what lookalike audiences are uh, basically is that the lookalike audiences will basically simulate uh, the people who are closest to the ones who have already purchased something from you if we're using the purchase parameter of your uh, pixel. And so this is a lot of people. 1% um, audiences this is like 2 million people that um, you can reach. One to two is also like around 2 million. So if you generate five of these, it's over 10 million people that you can reach. And this is very well targeted. Like these people will convert if you have a product that's relevant. Um, I've already generated these audiences, so I don't need to go through them again. So I already have them. I actually have too many. Um, so I don't know how to show this to you in a way that's not super confusing. Um, but let's see, I think a couple of the first audiences that I created were from my uh, Gumroad purchase um, event. And so here, for example, is a lookalike audience, 1% of Gumroad purchase. So I created this back in October of last year, and there are around 2.1 million people in it. Mm -hmm. So the last step, and I think the one that most people want to know is how to actually create an ad and how to set up the pixel within the ad itself. So you have all this great data from your pixel. You have all your audiences now set up, hopefully, after a couple of days of accumulating purchase data. And then finally, now you can create the campaign. And so here, um, this is a page that you're probably going to see a lot if you use Facebook ads. Uh, right now, I've just narrowed it down to show one campaign that I have that's um, pending. Um, normally, you would just create a campaign, and Facebook campaigns have three, um, what do you call it, categories of like organization. There's the campaign itself, there are ad sets within these campaigns, and then there are ads themselves. And each uh, level of organization lets you set different goals and expectations. So for the campaign itself, the main thing here is that you can either set it to uh, brand awareness and reach. This is to show your stuff to as many people as possible. I, I don't see as much utility with these two um, unless you're thinking really long term, like a year or two, and you're running out of steam and too many people have already seen your ads and you need to find new people. But if you're just starting out, um, I would take a closer look at consideration and conversions. For, so for consideration, if, for example, you don't have that many customers and you need to find them to make your pixel learn a bit more and get more data, you might want to set up a traffic um, campaign. And so what this does is optimizes your campaign for link clicks, uh, basically people who just click on your ad and see what you have to offer. Uh, once you have enough of those, once you have enough people who actually purchase your stuff, you can create a conversion campaign. And so these are the, probably the most powerful thing you can do in Facebook, conversion campaigns. Because these, um, whenever a new person actually purchases a product with, within a conversion campaign, Facebook will take that purchase and say, okay, so these XYZ conditions cause this person to purchase this product. Now we're going to show this product to all these similar people who have similar interests, needs, and like habits on social media. So, okay, here if we look inside the ad set, Facebook doesn't really tell you why, like what those conditions are. They, you sort of have to just say, like, Facebook, do your magic. You know, these are the closest based on what pages they've visited, what articles they've read, what things they've liked, like whatever it is, which I assume is like literally millions of data points about you. Yeah. Um, which is why it's so, it's by far, I think, like the best 
sort of the best thing to get started with because it's so the lookalike audiences is like pretty crazy sort of it's, it's, it's crazy good although it's sort of like a black box to those who are just like on the advertisers end you have really no idea what's going on besides that thing they're working um, <laughs> which is like all right that's not bad for like the short term but maybe when you start thinking longer term you have to like think more global strategy but like if you just want to drive a couple of sales this is a really really easy way of doing it just creating a conversion campaign once once you have enough like data points and then just letting facebook spend your money because you can also track your return on ad spend pretty easily too because with gumroad pixel it tracks like value so you can just clearly see if the money you're spending is actually bringing in more money from from advertising so if we look inside the ad sets um here you can control different aspects of your your campaigns and like for example like where the conversion event uh, actually happens so for here you want to select website and then for the conversion event itself it's going to ask what you want to um, track and so here you can just select purchase so um, I've actually separated out my pay purchases for my uh, free and pay purchases. So now I have a new uh, conversion event called paid purchase. And you can set your budget at the ad set level if you want, but I'd recommend just setting the budget at the campaign level nowadays since Facebook can optimize which ad sets get more spend. And then lastly, um, audience and placements. So audience here. Uh, you, you, here is where you want to want to select the audience that you created earlier, your lookalike audience, and then placements. Um, I'd recommend just automatic placements unless you really want to target a specific um, part of Facebook's network. Uh, you can select things like Instagram feed, Facebook feed, Instagram Explore, or you can exclude these different things. Um, I know some people don't like the Instagram video search messenger, so they just put things in the feed and the story. Uh, since feed and story have proven time and time again to convert pretty well. Oh, and one more thing, you can optimize the ad set uh, for either conversions, value, or a bunch of other options. If you're just starting out um, and you have a couple data points enough to optimize for conversions, I'd recommend just um, optimizing for your conversions. Um, you can also try and optimize for value, although I found that this generally drives up your cost per click and drives up the amount of money that you actually spend advertising. Um, and weirdly, your return on ad spend is actually a little less. Um, although this, I think this might depend on uh, what kind of uh, products you might sell. If you have like a very cheap product and then a very, very expensive product, it might be in your interest to convert for value. But at least for me, where things are generally more evenly priced, um, optimizing for conversion works just fine. And then one last thing here is the ad creative. So from here, you can set up what kind of ad uh, you want to run. There are things like single image, where it's just you put an image up or a video up, and then you have a description. A carousel, where it's a bunch of images that you can scroll between, um, or a collection, which I haven't used myself so far. I found that for me, carousels work the best, um, especially if you allow them to show the best performing card first. Um, what happens here is that, for example, if you just run a single image or just run a single video, what can happen is uh, ad fatigue and it happens really quickly. Um, people see the same thing over and over again and then they just stop paying attention to what's on their feed. But if you use a carousel, you have, let's say, like five or six images. Um, Facebook can rotate those images and then people can see different ones and then be like, oh yeah, wow, that's interesting. What is that? Oh, it's the same product, but I just noticed it. Um, that's why I'd recommend carousels if you want your ads to be running for a long time. Um, I've had my ads running since, I want to say, like November or October of 2019. And they're still generating um, like purchases. They're still generating views. People actually notice them. Um, if I had just done a single image, I feel like this would not have carried through for like months. That's, that's ads in a nutshell. So after you've done all that, just publish. Um, and then after you publish, you can see the amount spent every day. You can see things like return on ad spend, purchases, results. I mean, it's all neatly packaged um, in Facebook's ad manager. Awesome. Simple, easy. Yeah, simple. Pretty cool. I'm going to do this.
You should. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. That was really good. That was really useful. I think a lot of creators like kind of know that they should potentially look into this, but it's just, it's, I, I Dumbered, we see this actually a lot where people are, people have all these questions and then they finally do it. And they're like, that was it really. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> like, yeah. You upload some files, you, you know, give it a name, you have a nice cover price description, like you, you know, it's, but, but I think people always have that fear that things are a lot. I mean, definitely like parts of the Facebook UI, like there's so many things you just have to know, like, these are the three things that matter. It's like pixel, you know, audience, uh, and the ads like campaigns, like there's so many other things, you know, like you can see on this UI, there's like so many other buttons that you can get deep and deep into it. Like I think more oh, yeah. work on this than facebook.com. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is how Facebook gets all their money. So yeah, this is why Facebook is a $400 billion company right here. This page, basically this is, and Google is even crazier. You know, Google oh, yeah. is like kind of the same thing. So, so yeah, everyone should mess around with this as I'm, as I, we were talking like, because of coronavirus, a lot of businesses I think have stopped advertising for now. So I think you'll, if starting now is it's basically like there's never been a better time. And in general, ad costs, like as, as Facebook gets better, as more people get on Facebook, like you're basically going to like, it gets harder and harder to be successful. So like start as early as you can. I think that's a really good tip. And also it just takes time. You know, you'll, you'll learn something, you'll figure something out and then you'll, your sales will jump. And like, it just takes time to get to those sort of like, those those events for you so yeah and like you're gonna reach a level where i think it'll be self-sustaining almost yeah uh, once word yeah. of mouth is enough to just be advertising for totally. enough for you then i mean that's that's that and i feel like that happens sooner than you might think once like 10 people start talking about your products um those like spoken words generate more conversions than like any ad could like a personal recommendation from a friend. I mean, that's yeah. an ad is like acquiring a customer, but then that customer is going to go, you know, talk to people. And the other oh, yeah. thing with Gumroad, when you do, sometimes when you do ads on other platforms, like you make money from it, but with Gumroad, you also get the customer. So you can like email mm -hmm. them, you have their email, you like can basically talk to them forever. So, you know, they're, they're your customer that you acquire. So you can kind of, you know, if you're just doing like Amazon ads for your product, you have no idea, you know, who that person is or yeah. how to talk to them again or all these sorts of things. So you yeah, might get so, a follower on Instagram, et cetera. Like you'll be like the nice thing about this is like you're building relationships with people that are going to be really, really meaningful. So if you can even get this to break even, it's worth it because you're, you know, you're building your audience at least. Right. And pay oh yeah. I mean, in the beginning you might be losing money just for a couple of weeks, a couple of days, but it very quickly you're, gonna like reach the point where Facebook knows what your audience should look like and then retargets your stuff to them and yeah. it's not gonna take that long for you to like break even um, and then turn a profit uh, if your product is you know a good quality and people can vouch for it totally yeah and start low start at like five bucks a day or less even and you know you don't need a ton of data Facebook's really good like you don't need a ton of data to, to sort of get to that point I think so yeah yeah so yeah, if anyone's curious, they can check out your Gumroad. Uh, do you have do you have your own URL or do you just use Gumroad.com? I just use Gumroad.com. It's, it's easy. So Gumroad.com slash Jing Sketch. Awesome. Yeah, he has some great uh, landing pages too. If you just like click any of the products, they're so pretty. Um, I do do art, so that's <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that's. But yeah, great, a great usage of, I feel like a ton of, we, we often use your products internally just to like, make sure that we're like thinking about all the things. Cause you, you use so many of the, of the features. So it's awesome.